start streaming. It's time to do some painting. Okay, all right. That's all working correctly. Should be coming through loud and clear any time now. And no, I've got to wait. Just like you, I have to watch the ads as well on my own YouTube channel. Oh, that was entertaining. Okay, yes, sound is coming through. That's good. All right, so we're going to get started. This is my day off. This is my painting day. Um, I certainly hope that the live stream is working reasonably well. There's been a few technical difficulties, which I don't know why that is, but uh, my brother-in-law is planning to sort them out today. But anyway, it doesn't matter. This is my painting day. So this is unlike the format that I normally have. Normally what I will do is I'm going to sort of just paint and talk Dungeons and Dragons with you. So by all means, grab your own paints and miniatures and let's go for it, because why not? So let's start and then we'll get into this. Oh, by the way, um, you will find the start time for this video down the bottom. I don't edit these videos because they get so long, uh, but they, were, they will, it will be there. Okay. Um, oh, and by all means, you know, chat with me as I'm painting, for those of you who are unaware of what my painting day is like. It's my day off. I get to just do whatever I like. Okay, so. Hi, welcome to How to the End. Oh, oh, oh. Mouth is tongue-tied. I'm either tired. Hi, welcome to How to d, d My name is Fred Wheeler, and today I want to talk about Dungeons and Dragons while I paint my purple miniature, which is really a purple worm that is a miniature that is purple mostly with a bit of brown and flesh color stuff. We're getting there. It's getting there. It's been taking a while. Um, but then I'm not surprised because it's quite a big miniature. Anyway, so that's the plan for today. We're going to paint the purple miniature, continue it on its uh, path towards completion, so it looks something like this picture which it may or may not, who knows, you can uh, find the link if you want to buy this thing uh, down in the description for Gale Force 9. I don't have an affiliate link for this, so if you want to buy it, it won't support me. Who cares, doesn't matter. If you like the miniature, get the miniature. If you don't want the miniature, doesn't matter. Anyway, let us go get some painting done, shall we? How's it going, Mike? I can hear you well, Fred. Excellent, good news. Mostly purple. You're yeah, mostly purple, yeah. <laughs> uh, we're going to do some grey today. I'm going to start with the tricky stuff because um, as it happens, I figure I will lose my, either my voice or control of my, my arm some part way through this. So I'm going to go with the... I'm actually using Vallejo um, Medium C Grey for the spikes on it been working my way through the spikes eventually I will get them done I'm sure and we're going to be going with a very fine brush because um, I'm just not that good <laughs> that's just the simple fact it's a simple fact what's that Mike I've got just got some new minis to paint yesterday what a load of work ahead of me yes I can imagine can I get your email to share my learning curve with you I would love to share them even though they're not Pro. Um, you can share them with me, Mike, on my Facebook group. Are you a part of Facebook, uh, Mike? Because I have a Facebook group. You post them up there, man. Um, you can share them with everybody who's joined that group if you want. And you can always access my email address. It's in the About section of the channel. So, um, yeah, I don't. you don't need to sort of uh, have a, a secret message. My, my email address is not a secret at all. Uh, it is there and accessible in the About section. You just click on... Uh, business email and bam you've got me because it's the same as my personal email <laughs> okay so let's figure out the best angle of attack um, I feel like that's gonna be like super super hard for you guys to see anything good for me probably not good for you uh, let's well, we'll give it a go we'll give it a go we'll start here and work our way through and I'm just going to really sort of bulk put it on you don't use face I don't, I don't blame your Facebook here I get it but I have an email address you just check the about section of the channel it's not a secret it's always been there I just don't um, put my mailing address um, down that's all um, usually I, I, I sort of sort of hope that people will communicate with me via email first before I start giving out email addresses just so I don't wind up some, somebody um, being a, a smart um, sod and sending me something I don't want. Um, if you know what I mean. In a day and age like this, sometimes it happens. Anyway, let us paint 
Help Purple Worm. Oh, I went and saw the new, uh, what do you call it, Fantastic Beasts movie, The Crimes of Grimwald or whatever it was, and I, ha- I have to say I was kind of disappointed. I was really not too happy about the results of that movie. I was, th- I was actually looking forward to it. Um, you know, the first one was actually a lot of fun. The second one is so confusing. What is going on there? I don't know. It's going to be it's going to be hard, you know, for a lot of people who were really hanging out for that movie to find that this this movie, the follow up, is just not quite what they were hoping for. I, I was having a talk with um, actually it was my mum I went with, and it, there's so much going on. It started well, and then it went wacky. Anyway. I've uh, just placed an order for my Guildmaster's Guide to Everything. I'm still waiting for for the um, Waterdeep Dungeon of the Mad Mage to come through. When that book comes through, we'll do a flip through of that. There's, there don't seem to be too many reviews so far, and, and certainly nobody's done a flip through, which is kind of a shame. I guess it's just because they're time consuming, and they figure they don't want to need it. They don't need to do that. But I know personally I like the flip throughs because I get to see what's actually in the book rather than just take somebody's uh, word that what I'm going to be maybe buying is actually any good. I like to see it before I buy it. It's one of the good things about reviews on YouTube, right? Is you get to see things before you make a decision. Um, so yes, I am placed, placed the order for Guildmaster to... Guildmaster's Guide to Ravnica, and I'm hoping that in a, about a week or so, it's snail mail. It's New Zealand, man. It's to be expected. I'm hoping that my uh, Dungeon of the Mad Mage book will come through, and I'll be able to show you what's in there. I'm really looking forward to that. I know a lot of my um, the players that I've run games for have been talking about it as well, so uh, it's going to be highly popular. And from the sounds of it, it is a really just a collection of dungeon delves and floors with no sort of overarching uh, storyline, which, to be fair, I think is actually a good idea. You now, when you think about it, you don't really want to be tied down to something like that until you're ready. Uh, hey, Mike. Hey, Fred. Found you on Twitter. Yes, I'm on Twitter. As it happens, I am a twit. Hence, on Twitter. Can I share through there? You most certainly can share through there if you want to, mate. Not a problem. I don't check my um, Twitch uh, page very often, but share on there and I will go and check things out for sure. I was using Twitch to communicate with Jeremy Crawford about rules stuff, and eventually I got to a point where even though I'd I got one response from him about one question, and then after that, there's no no responses, and I was like, I'm kind of feeling ignored now, so um, I just haven't gone back there. I do post, but that's all set up automatically with YouTube. I never actually have to do anything. Uh, a lot of YouTube channels have software packages that automatically upload stuff to social media, media but they don't actually go and use those social media platforms at all. Uh, because there's so many, um, they tend to be, you know, they're selective about which social media they use. I tend to use Facebook just because it's one of the biggest ones out there and YouTube because it's one of the biggest ones out there too. And uh, yeah, it's what I know. Okay. As you can see, going to be a slow and tricky process getting the paint on but yes I was like all ready for um, this movie and I'm thinking ah oh, more monsters more creatures more beasts more story around that and I mean it has it there but it's just it's the other stuff that's going on that makes it all go just a bit weird it has what looks like a a Chinese dragon in the in the movie for those of you who aren't aware of what a Chinese dragon looks like. It's sort of got a, it's a dragon that's sort of got like a, a lion head to it. And that is all I will say about the movie other than that. How's that sound? Yeah, yeah right, I probably will say more. 
I'll try not to spoil anything for you. I haven't spoiled anything so far. It's just confusing. Dun -dun -dun -dun. Yeah. So yes, where did I... I was watching um, CJ on Don't Stop Think, um, Thinking. That's a YouTube channel he runs. You guys probably know about it already. Um, and yes, he had done a fairly extensive breakdown of the new books that are coming out. And it sounds to me like Spelljammer might well be the, the next thing uh, on the horizon for Wizards of the Coast. Which is good news, because, you know, we'd had so much Forgotten Realms material, and there's nothing wrong with Forgotten Realms, but it's nice to be able to go somewhere else eventually. And it sounds, sounds like the next year we should be seeing something from Travelling the Astral Sea, Spelljammer. And that'll be super popular. You can really sort of broaden your horizons. Take sail on the Astral Sea. And then you'll be able to use some of those other books and supplements that are currently available, such as the gift from um, Mordekainen's Tome of Foes and a few other things. That's the hippo creep people. You know, with the guns, the mercenaries, hippo people, of all things. You know, I um, when I think about Dungeons and Dragons, there's lots of things that it's done that it's been quite original. But it's interesting how they they do appropriate from successful pop culture. Something comes up that sort of you know it's done well and people like. They will include it into their their game system and their worlds. And um, obviously this has caused a few problems over the years as they have tried to appropriate material that people had copyright to in terms of intellectual property and so they've had to make adjustments. Otherwise, suffer the wrath of uh, being sued. But it's interesting how this sort of thing seem, tends, to ha ha it tends to happen quite a lot. And with regard to Dungeons & Dragons, probably more often with, with this particular game system than anything else. Oh, that is... That is a hor Trust me, if you're going to paint this miniature, it's not easy to get at all the little bits. It's super, super difficult. And now I'm down the bottom here trying to get my brush this is if this is a small brush we are relying on an old hand with poor eyes but not very easy to get at do 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 da, 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 da. so i've just put out on social media sort of a discussion about the crawling claw because somebody had asked me about the crawling claw and what it could be what you could do with it and my problem with the crawling claw and it's always been the case in terms of my view of it is it's not really a combat monster so i thought i'd stick out the topic on facebook and see what i would get back and uh hopefully that'll become a video at some point provided somebody comes up with something other than what i just said which is essentially what I just said. <laughs> okay, so the spine, the spikes, get to the spikes down here. I do apologize if you can't see what's going on. I struggle to see what's going on from this angle too. And there's no better angle to get at it because it's just a complete pig to get at. But I think that's mostly covered now. That's good. And then we'll just touch up around there. Like I can there's sort of like a plate there, so I'm gonna to try to paint it in as like a little triangle. I don't know how successful that'll be, but it's partly successful. Partly successful. The underbelly of this thing is not so easy to get at. All right. Let us continue on. And... There we go. 
the uh, publishing of this video might be a little bit at the end of the day might be a little bit long because my um, brother-in-law is going to make some adjustments to our internet and update some stuff so that might take a little bit longer for me to actually update the metadata like start times and things like that doesn't mean I haven't forgotten about it it just means I just can't get at it and I will do it eventually oh. there we go I'm still trying to toss up what I do with um, some of the other aspects of this worm because there are some locations that are really hard to get at and I know I need to sort of limit the complexity of what I try to, try to paint on and I will need to rely now you can't see nothing right now because I'm just barely trying to get that plate coated pardon me I'm burping now go got that it's just getting the angle right okay and we go there it is I thought it was really interesting and I think I mentioned it yesterday that you know when it comes to Dungeons and Dragons and what people find interesting and useful and what people watch the most is pretty much the same old stuff which is a little bit um, frustrating I have to say because that means that really you know what's the best spells for this class what's the best race to play what's the strongest and most powerful um, character builds you know all these sorts of stuff and then you know what's Dungeons and Dragons, Dungeon Masters, what's the worst thing you can do? What's the best tips? And, oh my gosh. Uh, what's that, Mike? Okay, I tagged you in a few posts on um, Twitter of my painting and tips for painting undertones in fur. Okay, going to try another dire wolf. I want brown fur with a hint of blue undertone. Oh, okay, cool. Do -do 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 -do. And I've been watching some of the other painting channels who do really nice work. But you can see they must spend like 20 hours of their time painting the miniature. And then another 10 hours of just editing down that video. Which is probably why they don't release huge numbers of videos because it's just so time consuming. All right. Okay, a bit more water, and we'll get that, that little plate underneath there sorted out. Oh, it's, it's always the angle. Okay, I'm going to turn it and see if I can attack it from this. I know you guys can't see anything, and I do apologise. It's just, it's really hard to get at. And this angle works much better than uh, if I turn it so you can see what's going on and I can't. we go and then just there stroking it just just right stroking stroking it just right it sounds weird doesn't it <laughs> but uh, yes I'm um, I have to say it, it is frustrating to see that the only videos that really get traction are the ones that everybody does over and over again it's really annoying never mind oh uh, for those of you who were wondering about how my home game is going I have a story for you you guys ask me about you know what's your funny stories so um, we've been mucking around with the sorcerer wild magic surge table and uh, we've been running with this current house rule the dungeon master and the players have all agreed is all right for now and that is that every time uh, my my dragonborn paladin world mage sorcerer tries to cast a spell of 
first level or higher, have to roll on the Wild Magic Surge table, rather than rolling a 20-sided dice to see if there is a chance of rolling on the Magic Surge table. So that means there's a lot more Wild Magic Surges happening. Because otherwise, it's such a boring class to play. Because you hardly, you know, you've got to roll like a 1 on a 20-sided dice. So there's like almost no chance it's ever really going to happen that often. It's very limited. Uh, um, which, obviously, there's a reason for doing that. But it's boring as. And I can see why a lot of people would get frustrated playing that particular uh, class and archetype. So we have implemented every time I cast a level 1 spell, I have to roll on the Wild Magic Surge table. And I have uh, accidentally nuked my own party with Fireball. They didn't die. We weren't level 1. We did survive. And amazingly, um, my friend Simon, who was playing a bard, uh, rushed into combat, which was the silliest thing to do, but he did it anyway which was really a good idea because when I cast a spell, I wind up with a fireball and he was out of range and everybody else got cocked, <laughs> including myself. Um, and then last night we had, um, to, to top it all off, because uh, it wasn't last night, it was Saturday night for me in New Zealand, um, I wound up turning into a sheep. And that was so funny. Uh, I used a piece of popcorn to represent my character and then uh, and then of course I took damage and then of course transformed back into my normal normal character because the damage was so great but oh my gosh it has been hilarious and and the whole group has been really good about the whole process because you know it can really it's, it's just a matter of time before my character dies I know this but the group has been really, really good about the, the consequences that might be for their own characters. Um, but it's been utterly hilarious. It's been a lot of fun. Um, I will probably present a video once we've been at it for a little while on a variant rule for using uh, Wild Magic for those of you who might be interested. But I don't want to do it just yet, not until I've sort of uh, mucked around with it a little bit more. So that I understand to sort of the, you know, it, I think it would be better to do it once the worst case scenario has unfolded. Uh, oh, I had confusion. The whole party had to contend with confusion too that night. There was, was a fireball, turned into a sheep, wound up with um, confusion um, cast on the entire party and I think only two were susceptible but they didn't just they just did nothing for like a round so it wasn't really much of a, a big deal um, but yes I will get back to that topic at some point for those of you who are interested and for those of you who are not interested it won't matter So I don't know if you can tell, but it's actually very, very difficult to get into the plates underneath here. Definitely down near the base in particular. Hugely difficult. La -da 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 -da. And I haven't been dungeon mastering for so long. It's been a bit weird actually, but I'm actually enjoying it. I haven't had a chance to play a character um, and just play a character and not have to prepare or prep or think about dungeon mastering for a group for so long. Not that I could, there just isn't the time nowadays. I struggle to keep up with uh, my, my time timetable as it is. And there we go, uh, get a bit of paint in there. You're definitely going to need a small brush to do these, otherwise it's going to be too hard. Ah. Hopefully the wash sorts the rest out. I don't know that it necessarily will, but I'm hoping it will. Okay. 
just need a drink of water, just bear with me while I, uh, I fluff with that. I definitely need to get um, the spikes around the underneath of the mouth sorted out today, I think. Um, yeah, so we'll, we'll, we'll definitely just have a look. Spikes and maybe some work on the teeth as well. Hopefully I can get that far. Ne you never know. It's just a matter of working your way through the process, right? Anyway, doesn't matter. Right, let's grab that. I'm hoping that people are enjoying the combat tutorials. They seem to be reasonably popular. Not hugely popular, but reasonably popular. It's been entertaining. Of, uh, I could swear there's a few people who show up just to see the monsters um, destroy the uh, player's characters. Um, but then again, I, I have made some matchups that seem a little bit... Uh, unfair. It's not really about fear, is it? It's Dungeons and Dragons is not about being fear, it's just about playing a game. I always thought the concept of fear, or f being fear in a game, was for a competitive game. So I, when people say fear, I feel like the only reason you would need to be fair if you were playing Dungeons and Dragons is if you didn't trust your dungeon master and you were playing a um, adversary game where the dungeon master and the players believe they are working against each other. Um, then, then you would need the concept of being fair. Just how I was thinking about it anyway the other day, and I still feel like that's kind of where it, where it sits. And I know with Dungeons and Dragons Adventurers League there is sort of this um, focus, you know, you, you, you play what are essentially seem like competitive tournament-like games. So I suppose you need to have a, a degree of building in the concept of being fair because there is an, ad, an adversary system in place where, you know, I know because I, I, remember, I remember what used to happen in terms of those sorts of games and the kinds of instructions where you were given as the dungeon master um, and how things were supposed to play out and how you were supposed to make them more difficult or you, your goal was to, a, a certain particular goal which you know normally if your own home game you wouldn't necessarily be working towards the goals that uh, a competition would have and that's essentially what they are right it's competition oh this paint's getting a bit thick so we're just gonna thin it down there we go and where, where can we go next? We go here. I feel like there's something going on that I've missed there. We'll just go through that and tuck a bit of paint on it. Tuck, tuck, chuck, chuck a bit of paint on it. Something like that. You are, f you are welcome to talk to me by the way. You do not need to sort of feel like you have to be quiet. Just because I, I don't always check the, um, the chat all the time because I'll be painting stuff and concentrating. But that's beside the point. Uh, what's this? What's that, Mike? Yes, Fred, I've been enjoying the combat tutorials. I was going solo mock combat encounters to learn the mechanics. I watch your videos and they help. Oh, good. I like your way of using monster-specific tactics. Yeah, I, um, I did uh, the animated armor. Uh, not so long ago um, for for monster tactics so there'll be a sprinkling of that coming through um, but I've been working on a couple of surprise videos so um, the combat tutorials will continue because I already pre prepped all of that work uh, so that I have enough for like nine about nine videos close to nine videos without any kind of additional uh, major work required so they'll keep going um, but yeah, 
the uh, the monster manual videos that I normally do that are more around tactics or how to use the monsters those are going to sort of maybe for the next week or two I won't do any and I will release the the stuff that I've been preparing they're a little bit different things that I felt like uh, had only been sort of glossed over a little bit and we'll just, just discuss them in specific videos and you'll find out about them fairly shortly I'll be doing some work on them after this but yeah if the, um, the combat tutorials continue to be popular I think the frustration I've noticed that a lot of people have been mentioning that they don't get notified by YouTube even though they've hit the bell button when I'm going live and when I'm doing those sorts of things and so and they would want to be there but they can't because they weren't informed and I know a lot of them take place at really odd times too so that's not very helpful but it's just the nature of time zones and I've got to do them after work there's only so much I can do on my days off and I want one of my days off to be a day where I get to just paint when the light is good it's very hard to see something if you don't have decent light not just for you but for me oh, what's that Mike um, any chance you would consider a combat tutorial video showing magic use maybe an area of effect spell or two absolutely Mike I will do that um, and it's coming um, I don't know what was I supposed to do I was supposed to do something like clerics or I did wizards the other day uh, that, that was only a you know like magic missile and a couple other things but what's going to happen is once I've covered the some of the basics with regard to playing at level one different classes I will cherry pick stuff that people would like me to discuss or talk about or demonstrate I used to do what were called essentially um, a whole s series on magic spells and so uh, what I thought I would do is I would do those live that you know there, there'll still be videos that are pre-recorded that are on spells but I will cover some of the other things that people want to see and I'll do them live so you can ask questions while I'm doing it I know there's a benefit to doing that sort of thing. P.S. I always get the notion from YouTube when you go live. Oh, notifications? Oh, good. Just, it's usually 3 a.m. here when you do. So, <laughs> yeah. No, I can, I totally get it. Yeah. Yeah, I don't, you, <laughs> I'm on the, um, the bottom of the world and our time frame is not the same as everybody else's. It's never going to be. I know that this time frame now is usually better for most people in the United States and Canada. Um, I know there's no time frame other than me staying up in the middle of the night uh, for the UK. If you're in the UK, you kind of there's no way around it, unfortunately. Um, I'm glad to hear that you're getting notified when I when I do go live. That's that's something, even if it is a ridiculous time for you. Oh, okay, I'm just going to clean this brush out again. To make sure the paint doesn't dry on it too hard. It's, layered brushes are really expensive. So yeah, what is it that you, you were talking about area effect spells, Mike. What is it that you really want me to cover? Is there something specific that you want me to talk about and demonstrate in the uh, combat tutorials? Is there a particular spell you are talking about? You never know. If it doesn't require too much prep on my part, it might happen this week. So yes, let me know. Uh, it's the grey is hardening up. We have to keep watering it down, and it's still too. Okay, there we go. Right <clears throat> now, I, I'm, I'm down to using uh, two fingers or two hands to maneuver my paint. Because it's oh oh gosh, I'll fix it later. Uh, 
okay just in here I do do requests I don't always do requests and I don't do requests on absolutely everything but there there are times it has happened somebody has asked a question and I've done a video specifically on what they asked and talked about in a live stream or in the comment section so yes if you let me know what you're after you never know <clears throat> Blah 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 blah. Da, 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 da. Ooh, where is it? There we go. Okay, so where am I going now? Um, so I want to try and get the spikes down this side sorted out. There we go. I think it was definitely the right idea to put the brown on and then go grey over the top. feel like that's going to really make a big difference later on. Uh, what's that Mike? Well regarding area effects, I'm hoping to just see how the, they work in combat mainly because they're not direct damage spells. Be nice to see how they affect a combat over a few rounds of time. Okay, uh, so you're really talking about area effect spells or some area effect spell that has a duration because I have done things like fireball. There are, there's a video on the fireball spell and um, lightning bolt. Uh, they're all area effect spells, right? But you want something else. I guess, you'd, are you talking about things like web or... Um, um, is it Evard's Black Tentacles? I think it's called Evard's Black Tentacles. Uh, Entangle, maybe? Those are the sorts of things you're talking about, because if it is, I, I understand what you're talking about now. It makes a bit more sense. The general gist to area effect spells that have a duration, though, Mike, is provided you can stay out of combat and you don't have to make concentration checks or it doesn't require concentration, which most of them do, they are highly effective at controlling the location and causing damage. Um, which is why something like um, Spirit Guardians, uh, in particular for, I believe it's a cleric, is hugely useful. And it's one of the go-tos. And it's not a high-level spell, so it's often used to control the output of damage in an area. In a defensive manner, but still in an area. Um, I see the benefit of choosing them versus direct damage spells like Magic Missile. I prefer a dynamic character, not just a simple damage dealer, you know. Yeah, no, I get it. Yep. Um, I think somebody had asked me a long time ago if I would do a video on the best buffing spells, and um, I haven't really sort of done that. And I guess um, at the time, I didn't really feel like I had enough behind me to make that happen. I just need some more paint. <laughs> but maybe I need to do that. I mean, I'm quite happy to cover some of the basic area effect spells that control the battlefield, you know, rather than cause damage. Or control the battlefield and cause damage. So, yep. That'll happen. I don't know when. Um... But yeah, if there's something in particular, if there's a particular spell in that you want me to cover, maybe that'll happen. Just depends what it is. You just need to let me know what it is. Uh, what's this? Stand by, I'll open my P Outland Player's Handbook and, and list a couple of area effect spells for you I'm interested in. Good. Sounds like a plan, Mike. Da, 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 da. I haven't really covered a lot of concentration spells. Beacon of Hope um, probably be about the only one, really. And um, Bless really wouldn't fall into that. It's sort of like more a buffing spell, really, isn't it? 
it's less about controlling the area and more about controlling the party's success rate. Okay. Right, so um, I'm going to try to sort of line it up here and then hopefully you can see what I'm doing as I'm painting along that ridge. It's really hard to get at. Yeah, da, 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 da. I had to squeeze out a bit more paint, by the way, if you were wondering. Hi, August. August, Spain. How's it going? Welcome to the live stream. Which Ravnica race class combo are you excited for? Well, I haven't really had ch a chance to see everything that's going on, but I like the Luxodon. Um, I like the idea of the elephant people. Um, as for classes, um, like all things regarding Dungeons and Dragons, um, I've never been particularly interested in new class combinations. Um, it's not because, I mean, you know, that's just my personal preference. I'm one of these people who honestly would prefer a much simpler, streamlined game rather than anything else. So hence, I, I don't really sort of get involved too much and too excited about new class options. I know my players, they, they you know, they're really into that sort of thing, but that's because they are. Um, but I like backgrounds and races more, but the Luxodon is the one that I like the most. I also am really excited for the fact that this is a chance for um, the world of Magic the Gathering to be incorporated into the the myth of the basically the the world of Dungeons and Dragons, so it's now going to be an option. You don't have to use it, but it's now there for people to use if they want. And I think that's actually a good thing. We needed something new rather than just the same old, same old. And to be fair, let's get real. This is not a completely new option. It's, it's still pretty much the same thing as before that. Magic the Gathering players have been using for years. Um, so what are you excited about, Tom? August, Spain? Um, what are you hoping to, to get out of the new Ravnica uh, Guildmaster's Guide? Uh, Kujo, how's it going? Uh, do the new limited ed edition core books have any new rules? I've heard this. Yes, they do. Yes, they have the new incorporated um, errata that's just been released um, so that has been included. It's been released at this time because of those book releases. That's deliberate. I believe there's a change to uh, the spear. So spear is now considered a polearm, which I have to say probably makes a lot of sense. Um, I, I don't know that I necessarily agree that it should have been included as errata. I feel like it's they, they keep adding bits and changing things, which is fine, but it just sort of, it makes it messy for those of you who have already got books, you know, and I know what they're trying to do, they're trying to avoid doing a reprint or a new ed edition of the game, and they're waiting till there's enough going on, so this is the transition, right, that we're having to deal with as you go from, oh, by the way, hi, hi Darren, how's it going, and thank you, um, I'm hoping it is going to look good. <laughs> This is the transition that we had from Dungeons and Dragons uh, third edition to uh, 3.5, where they eventually, you know, they'd made so many changes they decided to release a new version of the game. I feel like it's going to wind up happening with fifth edition too, uh, just because of the sheer number of things they keep changing. They've changed quite a lot. Um, and I realise that you can you can download the, the game rules for free, so you don't have to go and buy another book. But it does mean that a lot of people have got a whole bunch of players' handbooks that are out of date now. And I imagine that will annoy people. It would annoy me. I, I totally understand people who get frustrated by that. Uh, there. Okay. Now I'm supposed to be going in here but I don't know okay good enough good enough all right so um, 
I've got that edge. There's a plate down there. There's, the plate's right at the bottom. I'm going to give me so much trouble. Uh, Cujo, what do you got here? Will D&D Beyond be automatically updated? Yes, it always is. In fact, I get constant, well, I wouldn't say constantly, but I get quite a lot of people who correct my older videos and say, that's not how it's done, Fred, because this is what D&D Beyond says. And I'm like, well, it was fine and right when I first made it, but I'm not going to remake the video just because they changed the stuff. Um, why is it that my channel has to be the one that does that? There are other channels out there. <laughs> Otherwise, I'd be chasing my tail forever We're dealing with the new changes. I was talking about that yesterday with the long rest and the elf trance. Um, and I know there aren't that many videos on the topic. In fact, there probably aren't. There's like one on the elf trance. Two. <laughs> two that, that are out there for the elf trance. And the long rest, mine's the only one. Um, but yeah. That's not to say that there isn't channels who haven't covered that sort of thing. It just might not be quite so easy to find. Okay. Uh, what's that, August Spain? Yes, backgrounds really matter. I'm excited for a city structure and the, the centaurs. Oh, cool. Um, it really blew my mind trying to figure out bonus actions. Yeah, well, you know, I don't blame you. When they up update the uh, the rule system which I will eventually happen I think we will see the uh, removal of the bonus action because when you say the word bonus action people aren't thinking of uh, something that's different from the actual action itself they're just assuming that you're getting another action in itself they don't understand that it's what it is is just a supplement to help adjust and modify your action they usually run in conjunction with your action, you, you know, as part of a class feature. And occasionally it's a spell, but it, all it's done is confuse the everybody. I was about to say a bad word. Um, but the, it's confused so many people, and I get that question all the time, what's the difference? So I would imagine that eventually the concept of the bonus action will get ditched. I would really appreciate if they did because I imagine um, the number of comments that I regarding asking that question would reduce for me and a whole lot of other people and particularly Jeremy Crawford. I feel bad for him because he's got to deal with all that stuff half most of the time. Uh, oh, oh, that's a good angle. I don't know if you guys can see what's going on, but I can see I can get in my brush on that angle on that one plate there really nicely. <laughs> Oh, and there. Let's do that as well. That was that worked nicely. Excellent. Okay. Uh, what, well, Mike? Yes. How about fire shield web uh, conjunct minor elementals confusion? Just as ideas. All right. Let me grab a pen. Have I got a pen? I'm not going to promise that I'm going to do it, but I am going to write them down. In my book right now so that I know that these are things that uh, someone would like me to cover so that is fire shield and combat and you want web uh, conjure minor elementals got it and confusion. Oh my gosh. Confusion is such a complicated, um, such a complicated piece of work. But I will have a look at them and have a think. So look, it's upside down, but I've written them down. I don't know if you could see that, but I have. I've written them down. <laughs> You probably can't even make that out. I don't know when I'll do them, but I will do do them at some point. Okay. Uh, la, 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 la. Uh, right. Back to the painting. Oh, and the grey. Mm-hmm. 
although it might not seem like I've got very much done today, but honestly, with all the little fine rinky dinky fiddly bits in this thing, I actually feel like I've done heaps. I want to attack the base plates down here. I don't know if you guys can see what I'm doing, but um, I'm going to try to get them done now. Ah. Alright. I'm going to get really quiet for a second while I get this done, okay? That's that little bit in there. We'll change the angle in a second. Uh, what's that, Mike? Fred, thanks. Sounds like I bet your beat your personal armor class with the confusion spell. Yeah, well, I was. We were running through the confusion spell on uh, my um, game night uh, with my home group. Uh, we had to deal with confusion, and um, that was confusing. <laughs> <laughs> it was confusing for us all because we not only did, were we dealing with wild magic surge, we were dealing with the confusion spell, and um, we were trying to determine what the heck was going to happen. We were also afraid of what would happen. It, it is renowned for causing all sorts of strife. Um, obviously, not as notorious as the wish spell. But for a spell that isn't a particularly high level, um, it can cause a lot of hassles. And you just, you, there's no way of knowing what's going to happen from that point. Because it's completely dependent on what you rolled. If you roll, if you roll the wrong numbers, then it's, it's going to be bad. Um, the best case scenario is you wind up uh, generally not having to do anything. And you just lose your action and you can't do nothing. Uh, what's that? Uh, Cujo, I bought the Pathfinder Gigantic Green Dragon unpainted. Wow! I think I'll paint it blue because it looks very much like a D&D &D blue dragon. Have you seen it? No, I haven't. No. But, um... Yeah, I haven't seen that before. Uh, if you're on my Facebook group, chuck it up there and show me. Um, or you can always chuck it up on Twitch, because, um, not Twitch, Twitter. Twitter, if you're a part of Twitter, I'm on Twitter. Uh, and I'll have a look. I just can't afford the big expensive, I really can't afford anything nowadays. I'm buying the books, but that's really because you guys are funding it. Um... And uh, yeah, and that's that's usually through the Amazon affiliate marketing stuff and the the YouTube AdSense revenue. Um, as long as, as long as Wizards of the Coast doesn't release too many products, I'll be all right. And that has mostly got those plates covered. Not super super fancy, but. Mostly the way I wanted them. Okay. Yeah, there's been a few miniatures that I've spotted in the game stores that I've been really tempted to um, to acquire. Uh, and even though I still have a discount on D&D &D stuff in my game store, uh, because of what I've done in the past, it's it's just too, pro um, it's too expensive. I just don't make the money I used to. Uh, before I had a lot more sort of um, f flexible income. Nowadays I got to worry about paying rates and stuff. Petrol has been astronomical. Do do do. 
I'm still tossing up whether I get the Mad Mage's, um, yeah, Dungeon of the Mad Mage map pack. I really would like to get it, but I don't want to get it if I, I haven't seen sort of what it's like. I just feel like sometimes these maps they put out are a bit blah. I don't want a blah map. I want a decent, cool looking map. And if I can reuse them in, in my uh, videos, then hey, that's definitely going to happen. But I feel like they'll be just general um, area maps that you would normally use as a dungeon master. Which I'm hoping will definitely be in the book rather than you have to buy the map pack to get access to the actual maps. Wouldn't make any sense to do it that way, but you never know. Okay, so that's all of them. I still need to get the spikes along that side sorted out. Uh, what's this? Um, oh, Kujo, I backed the new Dwarven Forge Kickstarter. Can't wait till July. July's ages away, mate. <laughs> that's a long way off. Might G. Fred, I don't buy off Amazon often. Can I mail you a gift card? Yeah, of course you can. I really appreciate all the work you do for us in the community. Thank you. And you're welcome, mate. It's not a problem. Yep. Um, Epidermis Ghost. I like the uh, definition on the gullet of this minute, mini. I totally understand what you're getting. Yeah. I've, I've been looking at it. And I've been thinking, oh, I should do some more stuff. And I, I have, have got to avoid doing that because it's actually looking with the brown and the flesh, it is actually looking pretty good. And if I touch it, it will remove a lot of the, the ridges that have actually popped up. And if I put like a wash in there, um, I'm sure it's going to improve it yet again. So, yeah, thank you. Uh, I heard the map pack isn't a great, isn't great, very small print. Oh, okay. That's why I want to see it. If I see it, then I'll be able to make a decision whether I want it. But I, I want a, a decent, you know, I'm expecting to get something that I can actually lay out for my players. Uh, so they can, you know, I don't have to draw it. But if that's not the case, or it's not blown up or something like that, then there's no point. Um, I've got a really good map for um, Halls of Under Mountain, uh, which I don't have anymore because it got stolen. And um, it was it was great because it, I could lay it out and the players could see it, but they didn't know what were in those locations. So that that it still had a use for me as a dungeon master and as a use for the players. So they had this map but they didn't really know what was in each location, but they would go to a location to find out and then mark it off as they went. And uh, once I'd finished with the Halls of Under Mountain, then they'd, stri they'd strike out and try different locations that hadn't been uh, filled out and I would have to uh, create something for that location. And then of course remember what was there. But it doesn't matter because you can change it. It's like, um, I guess you think, think of Under Mountain as a location where the rooms just can change and shift and move around uh, a little bit like a, a labyrinth so you know just just because you've been there before doesn't mean it's going to be the same when you go back give it enough time it might have changed significantly all right hang on I need this lid this lid might help support it while I get my paint on so, so. there we go it's working uh, what's that? Um, looking super realistic. I wouldn't say it's realistic, but thank you. Um, Mike, email me like uh, Mike Garrett at hotmail da, 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 and we'll get it done tonight. Um, um, Mike, uh, that's that's cool, but my email is is in the about section of my channel, so you can just email me directly if you want. It's not a problem. I don't often buy off Amazon because I'm not in the United States, so um, I tend to buy most of my stuff from the book depository. Free shipping to New Zealand. 
shipping and freight to New Zealand is, is a killer. Which is why I have it as one of the affiliate links. It doesn't even make any money, but it's still there if people want to use it. I understand that the cost of shipping from um, Amazon, if you are uh, in other parts of the world, is pretty hard. But yeah, I like the idea of a map where, you know, you could lay it out. It was nice and big and it was done and, um, and the players could then just look at it and decide, all right, we'll go there and find out what's there. And they, they would sometimes go back and find the same thing there or they'll go back and find things that shifted. Um, oh, what's this, Sam Kojo? Uh, dun the Dungeon of the Mad Mage seems like a good campaign to go to from Lost Mine of Fandel. Well, it, it's from level 5 to level 20. I think what you'll need to do is you'll want to try to keep some of the antagonists in the dungeon uh, alive. Um, and I was thinking about this uh, today, actually. Uh, as, as they explore, you want to have some of the creatures in there survive, live, if it's possible, if they do, then they can be a reoccurring NPC or monster, uh, which can change things up. And um, maybe the input into the the dungeon or the layers of the uh, dungeon will um, get the attention of Halister, resulting in a greater th threat above ground rather than just below ground. Apparently you can't teleport to throughout the uh, the dungeon location, so it means you can't just go back to where you were before. I think that's actually a good move. Um, but yeah, I won't know till I see the adventure. I have, if you're if you're looking for a, a really nice, well laid out adventure from level one to level five, I think that by far the most successful. Um, pre-made adventure that Wizards of the Coast has put out right now is definitely got to be this Wood, Wood Deep Dragon Heist. It's, it's so well uh, put together uh, in comparison to some of the other products that they had, which is a shame. It's a, it's a shame it's taken them this long to get there. <sighs> What's that ghost? Nice detail work on the scales and ridges. Oh, thank you. Um, this is actually just just building up um, the color range and then I've got to go in and, and wash it but you don't want to see a video where I'm washing a miniature because it's what oh, you wash the miniature and now you can't do anything else with it for the rest of the time it would be a boring live stream it'd be a real snoozer I'm not suggesting that you're not snoozing now but <laughs> yeah not a great video um, You'd wind up talking to me about Dungeons and Dragons or something else rather than me doing any painting. La da 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 da. Okay. We had oh, a little bit of paint there. And this paint is drying up real fast. Yep, yeah, Mike. Like I said, you know, anybody can get hold of me. I've got my email. It's in the About section of the channel. So you, you can always contact me privately. Not a problem. Um, Kojo, I've read through it a little on D&D Beyond. Okay. Um, sorry Fred, I see everything but an email on the about section. Oh really? That is, that is far, rather odd. I can't, I can't, you can't see anything on the about section of my channel. It should be, when you click on the about section, there'll be a business email. And, um... I'm just clicking it on now. So if you look down the bottom, scroll down, and it says details, and it says for business inquiries, view email address, and just click that. Does that make sense, Mike? <laughs> so scroll down to the very bottom, past all of my social media links, past the, the LinkedIn Frederick Wheeler, and it says details. Then below that it says for business inquiries, just click view email address and bingo you got it 
Oh, you won't see it if you're on mobile. Yes, that's right. If you're on on your <laughs> if you're on your um your cell phone, yeah, it's a bit hard to spot because it's not going to show up. But on a computer, not a problem. It is Frederick Wheeler, one two nine. At gmail.com. As I said, not a not a secret, but all lowercase. But if you if you want to make sure you got it right. Um, just just check on your computer when you get home. Provided you got one, that is. And that's a good point, by the way, Darren. I'm glad you made <laughs> made that uh, distinction. Yes, social social media is not completely supported by mobile devices. Uh, Feel like those ridges there are a bit of a mess to deal with. But anyway, uh, what's that, Darren? It doesn't show show on mobile apps, Fred. Yeah, no, I kind of figured. There's a, there's a few things that don't show up. I can't do everything that I would normally like to with YouTube on uh, my cell phone. Like I can't, uh, I can't actually edit or change a, a stream that I might have planned. <laughs> this is like, really? Apparently. Oh, okay, laugh out loud. I'm streaming from my phone to my smart TV. That's why I can't see it. Yeah, that'll be it. Yeah, give me a second. I'll just type it in, okay? Uh, just Give me a sec and I'll type the email address and I, I don't know if YouTube might block me. <laughs> hey, wouldn't that be funny? Um, usually things like this they do block. But it isn't a secret, never has been. Uh, gmail.com. Have I got it all there? Frederick129 and gmail.com and press the enter. That seems to be coming up. There you go. But if you ever forget it, it's in the about section. Um, okay. <laughs> uh, oh, okay. All right. This is this is getting a bit frustrating. There's just not enough paint on the brush. Okay. Maybe I need to adjust my strategy for this. Um, I'll turn it around that way so that it's actually facing me. Does that mean it blocks it for you guys? That's the, that's the trick. Oh, it's not too bad. I can still you can still mostly see what I'm doing, and I can still work on it. All right, let's get a bit more grey. Um, Mike, what's this? Okay, I'm screenshot that laugh out loud in case you wanna erase it to avoid YouTube block. Well. They haven't blocked it yet. It's good news. But if it does come up, you screenshot it, so she's all sorted. <laughs> uh, okay. Oh, um, for those of you who don't know too much about a channel called uh, the DM's Lair, I I recommend checking him out. If you're a dungeon master, go check him out. He's got some very good advice. Um, he he is he's a bit pragmatic at times about um, how you should do stuff, but as a general rule, his advice is pretty solid. And I like the fact that he's he's got onto the live streaming uh, with his um, subscribers early on in the piece. So he actually spends, a, I think it's about it's once a week, once a month, he'll stream and talk talk games, talk Dungeons and Dragons, talk DMing. He is primarily set up for Dungeon Masters rather than players though. He doesn't do really sort of work with both. He might change his view on that, we'll see. But yeah, consider checking him out if you get a chance. 
there's so much content now you know, you sort of you got to split your time to decide what's what's sort of useful to you and what isn't now if you you probably can't see what I'm doing you probably only see the top of the brush rather than the tip and that is because <laughs> I just there's no other way for me to get get at it if I don't do it this way so sorry about that and ah, oh, okay all right it can be fixed I made a bluey it was definitely a bluey in mind it's too late now I'll fix it later in the touch-ups You know what it is, it's, I'm getting tired, right? And so all this high concentration painting is starting to hit him, cause me to get, make, make errors and get, uh, get all messed up. So what I will do is I will shift and I'll do the base and I will leave the rest of the spikes around <clears throat> the mouth for another day. I think that's the smartest thing. So that's what I will do. So let's flip it over. I really wanted to finish those. I, I sort of started to get some paint on there, but I, my hand is starting to lose control. So I'm going to just grab uh, a bigger brush. I think it's this one here. With, oh, I'll just pull out that here. Come here, you. Yeah. Ah, whatever. And a bit of water. And mix my brush with my paint and maybe a bit more water because it's not enough and then just move it around okay and i might use the dry big dry brush for this as well mike okay fred check your email when you feel like it uh thank you so much for all of the great content you're welcome um love your interaction with us too you're welcome man that's the whole point of doing this sort of thing it's actually the part that I enjoy the most. And <clears throat> I heard your email come through. My phone started making a noise behind me. <laughs> okay, so let's uh, let's see if I can't um, brush on the base and get our base sort of partly moving. And I just dry, lightly brush it on, flick it round. All right, don't flick it around, it'll wind up on the camera or on my screen. There we go. I feel like that's working out pretty well so far. <clears throat> What's that, Mike? I think you acknowledge your subscribers the most out of uh, any YouTube DD content creator out there. Yes, because I'm small. Can you imagine if I had to contend with. Uh, you know, something like 200 comments on every video that I did. There's no way I'd be able to make video content. So I, you've got to be, you know, I, I agree, I probably do, but it's it's just the logistics. Those channels are just so big. But I can acknowledge you in live chat while I'm doing stuff, which is much easier for me. That's why I live stream so much. The comment section gets less use that way. Because you don't need to. You know, you, you can wait. To, usually there's like at least one live stream during the week that it, most people, apart from those in the UK, can come and chat with me in person and ask me questions. So that's why it works out. Uh, uh, what's that, Mike? Well, that uh, ground texture looks crazy yeah no it's not bad eh? it's it's just I'm gonna have to go to a smaller brush to pick it out otherwise I'm gonna wind up hitting everything else um, it's not enough gray coming off in some locations so just it's dried up so much that's all 
Okay, so let's shift off that. We'll put the dry brush away because it's way too big for the rest of this area. And we'll go to this brush here, which I'm hoping has got a bit of mostly... Oh, that's too much. Pardon me. Okay, so we'll just pick out some locations. More of the flat areas. Pardon me. It's, I'm belching. I do apologise. And we'll just pick out the locations that I want to sort of focus on. Just around there. Or paint there would be preferred. Alright, I'll move this around so you can see. Big flat areas there. We'll just hit them. Yeah, the ground texture is pretty, pretty cool, eh? Oops, that's a bit too much paint coming off there. Let's just move it to there. Just going to have to work slowly, I guess. I'm going to have to use a smaller brush as we get close to the um, to the worm itself, though. La da 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 da. Yeah, we can get in there. And around that. It's not working out too badly, it's not brilliant, but it's it's working out alright. Okay. Oh, yep. The smaller brush was um, the way to go for the rest of this, I think. And oh, it's one of those um, those scales has actually got a a deliberate defect in it. It's like it's already been injured in the past. I was watching Extra Life with uh, Chris Perkins and a bunch of celebrities and they had the first thing they had to contend with was a purple worm. Um, and I thought that was very entertaining. Um, and I, I believe, I can't, I can't believe, one of the characters got swallowed by the purple worm. It was a Matthew Mercer uh, as soon as he found out it was a purple worm, he's like, I, I go invisible. <laughs> and I was like, smart move. Smart move. Yeah. Purple worms are dangerous. Get swallowed. I've been swallowed by at least... How many times have I been swallowed by a purple worm? One, two, three... At least three times. And it's never been good. I think I had one character, no, two characters die when they got swallowed. One killed outright. I think I was level one when I got eaten by the first one. <laughs> uh, dear. I kind of suspected that would happen anyway, but... But it was funny. Um, what's that? <clears throat> uh, so, Kojo, I, I watched that too. Very fun. Funny. Yeah, no, it was good. Uh, I, I'm struggling to get the paint onto there. And I don't really want to put out more paint because it'll take me just so long to get it to... 
get to a point where it's dry enough on the brush that it's going to work. Okay, that's Yeah, she's coming along. I knew it would. Just keep working on it, I guess. I'm, I'm definitely going to have to spend a bit of time with a smaller brush to sort of deal with the base section, but I mean, the worm is really the main feature, right? I don't want to spend too much time on the base. Uh, yep, okay, that'll do for today, I think. All right, so we'll just line that up. And uh, what's that, Mike? Can't wait to find a home group, laugh out loud. I I haven't gotten to play D&D yet since I started getting back into it. Um, I played a few times as a kid in the early 90s, all right. And I'm excited to get into it again. Well, that's cool. Um, Mike, I hope it all goes well. There's plenty of options out there to try to find people. So, yeah. And... Um, I know you don't use Facebook anymore, but there are definitely ways if you go to game stores, you know, there's usually somebody who sort of started something up. One of the best ways is if you've got a game store near you, start up with Dungeons and Dragons Adventurers League playing D&D &D Encounters, and then find a group who want to sort of go off and do their own thing. People do it all the time. It's a good way to do it. Or there's heaps of places where you can search online too. All right, so that's, um, that's the worm for today. And I'm going to finish there and say, look, if you liked this sort of thing, please share and like the video. If you enjoyed talking and chatting with me while I was fiddling around with a brush and paint, hey, cool. Uh, and talking D&D &D and talking movies and just talking rubbish, really. Um, yeah, share and like it. Uh, subscribe to my channel if you like this sort of thing because I do this every week. Every week this is my day off where I hang out and just paint miniatures and talk Dungeons and Dragons. Hit the bell button to be notified when I go live and when I publish new videos, which happens quite a bit as it happens. Uh, if you want to support my channel, you support my channel by sitting through this really, really long video. And if you did, well done. And uh, you finally will get an opportunity to do something else far more useful with your life than watch me paint a purple worm. <laughs> uh, but I have many other videos too that you're welcome to go and check out. I don't do Patreon, but down in the description there are affiliate links to the Book Depository and Amazon. You know the story, you buy stuff online, I get a small commission. You just uh, go through the link, buy what you want, you do not have to buy the thing I've linked to. And um, yeah, that's pretty much it. If you're part of the live chat, I did enjoy chatting with you, thank you very much. And if you're not part of the live chat, you are welcome to put something down in the comments section and I will uh, respond when I get a chance. And that is all there is for today and I need to go and have some food. So till next time, keep rolling those 20s. No, that's a 12. It's an 18. Can I even find the 20? There might well be a 20 here, but there's a 1. Should be on the opposite side. There's the 20. There we go. Found it. Took, took forever, but it's, there it is. There's a 20. All right. See you later, everybody.